It's now October and it's officially becoming fall here in Tennessee, which means the days are getting shorter, we have less sunlight hours, which makes it so much more important for us to have more solar to be able to charge our batteries that are gonna run all the projects here through the winter. And to go with the cooling weather and to help us celebrate all the wins that we'll have on projects this month, today we're homebrewing our own little festive beverage to enjoy brewed right here on the Runaway Ranch. We're Matt and Cass, a couple of adventure chasers seeking the roads less traveled in today's world. For the last three years, we've been living on the road. First, in our bus home Lady May, then our rad van Jolene. Our journey brought us through the wildest parts of the United States, from the crystalline springs of Florida to the incredible peaks of Idaho, and then spending six months internationally traveling all through Mexico. But today, we put the van in park to take on a new challenge the building of a fully off-grid homestead in rural Tennessee. <laughs> Ready, Dad? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Today we're starting on the first little expansion of our solar system. We've already not really been able to keep up with the demand from the little bit of solar that we have on the van. So we knew that we were going to want to expand and we're not exactly sure how we want that to be fully yet. So today what we're building is actually just a 400 watt portable solar stand. So we're going to have four 100 watt solar panels up on this stand that I'm eventually going to put on some wheels so we'll be able to move it wherever it needs to go. So the benefits of it being mobile are going to be that A, we can move it around to follow the sun. B, we're not exactly sure how things are going to be set up here on the ranch yet. So we don't want to permanently concrete any solar arrays in until we get a better feeling of that. So I'm gonna measure this panel up to make sure that my plan is gonna fit its dimensions right, and we're gonna start cutting some wood. Did you do your math twice? Oh. Do it twice. Two times. How's it going? Hot, but I got the box, the base of it set up with the hinge and it is sturdy because this ultimately I want to be able to trailer it or just pull it across the property when I get wheels on the bottom. So I wanted to make sure it was a super sturdy base and it is. So let me put it down over there and give you an idea of how it's gonna work. So basically we have a box here and we have the corner braces in there just to strengthen it up um, because the idea is that we'll be able to move this mobily. So I wanted that foundation or, or that bottom frame to be really strong. Then we'll have our four 100 watt solar panels that'll go across the two boards and at one end of the board we have it on hinges so that we'll be able to pivot it up and then at the top of the board that's not gonna be permanently mounted into anything but it's gonna have different preset locking positions of where it can sit depending on what angle we want to set the solar panel at. Now being able to lay them all the way flat was really important for this because this is a more mobile unit, it's not permanently anchored, and if there was a bad windstorm I want to be able to get these solar panels as low profile as possible just so that less wind gets up from under them. Ultimately this wagon is going to be pretty heavy so it shouldn't fly away but safety first baby. 
So if you watched last week's episode, we went acorn collecting, which eventually will be acorn flower. We're still soaking them. It is taking awfully long every day changing this water. We actually got a tip from one of our subscribers to put it in our creek in a mesh bag and let it flow. And that's the fastest way that it'll get done. But for this batch, we're just changing out the water every day. And then I have another batch I'm working on right now that I'm gonna put in the creek and see how that method works in comparison to this one. So far, this is taking up a bit of water, so I think the other one actually might be better as long as the creek is fast moving enough. But right now, I'm gonna dump this. You see how it's still kind of dark? It's because it needs to be dumped. So, dumped, new water. Once it gets clear, that means all the tannins are out. Well, I was not lying to you when I said we still have so much more wood. I have loaded everything up here and dump it into a pile over here. Eventually we're gonna do some burns because like I said, this stuff is almost like broken down. It's so tiny that it's basically gonna be used for like mulch or underneath garden beds, or we're gonna burn it. But it's gotta get out of our living space. <laughs> Time to get the muscles working and dump this all. this thing on TikTok the other day that it was basically a conveyor belt for the back of your truck and you just like kind of turn it out and it all goes down whether you're hauling mulch or sticks or whatever you're hauling and it'll just fall out of your truck and I think that might be in our future. It's pretty cool because <laughs> this is hard work. So a couple of days ago, our very beautiful friends, Jerry and Lisa, gave us this gift. They live here in Tennessee. They're seriously amazing, amazing people. We are so thankful for their friendship and they gave us this little gift. Jerry actually makes these and sells them at different markets, like different farmers markets and stuff around the area. And they're just so beautiful and he's so unbelievably talented. Depending on things I didn't know about wind chimes, depending on this, it sounds different. And the piping itself is actually tuned. So the different bars and the different thing that hangs from the bottom, I don't know much about it, but it's beautiful and I'm excited to put it up. Is this spot good, hon? Yeah, it looks beautiful. Okay. Okay, Sam, you need that drill.
See, I did that at the angle there. Yeah. Because it's, it's not stronger. a hook, but that, well, not just stronger, but it won't be able to unclip from the wind. Look how beautiful it is. It's perfect. Ready? Supposed <laughs> <laughs> to blow the lower part. Oh, yeah, this part. Yeah. Oh, it sounds so nice. Very I'm nice. gonna love hearing that in the morning. Cheers, friends. Thank Cheers, you. Thank you. We love it. Day two. Same project, different day. I wish we could say we had all the energy today, but to be honest, we're feeling tired. We're feeling slow, but we're still trying to get this done as fast as possible. Um, it kind of looks like it might rain today, so we want to get it done before the rain. How are you feeling today, honey? A little sleepy, but progress on the solar panels are going good so far. I got those mounts um, drilled in pretty easily. So the solar panel mounts, rather than using the pre-drilled um, holes on the sides of the solar panels, for my design, it was better to have it on the ends of it. So I just drilled through there, mounted them there, and now I'm connecting them onto the mount. <laughs> Hey honey. What's up? Do you want another cup of coffee? I would love for you to make another <laughs> cup of coffee. We are slow today, baby. It's a two type of coffee kind of day. Baby, oh, this should help. It might be a little strong, but worth it. Worth it. We might need the energy. So let's hope this helps. Dear Carl. We wanted to reach out and thank you so much for being a part of our Runaway community. Your support, love, and knowledge go a long way here on the ranch. We hope that one day you'll be able to come out and enjoy it with us, as you have been here since the beginning. Sending good vibes your way. Thank you so much again. Cheers, Matt and Cass. finishing up our last patreon letter they're gonna get a sticker a little note from us and eventually they're gonna get their koozie seriously guys joining us on patreon means so much and we want to thank our patreon community um, for always supporting us in whatever crazy adventure we get up to so i'm closing this now and then these will be sent out this week in your new saw honey great real great i mean the blade just cuts so clean all right 
Ooh, heavy with one hand. So we got it so that the solar panels are on their hinge. My one thing right now is without um, a crossboard kind of connecting this top beam to the bottom beam, I'm a little worried it's gonna put too much strain on the solar panels. They're really just holding their own weight, so they should be fine. But to be safe, I'm gonna add a couple beams across uh, just so that the frame itself supports most of the weight rather than the solar panels. I wish I had another two by three, but I only have two by fours. I prefer building with two by threes wherever I can because A, they're quite a bit cheaper, B, they're quite a bit lighter, and they take up a little less room. Two by four is all I got, so. Overbuild, not underbuilding. <laughs> I mean, a two by three would be plenty for this. A plenty, plenty. A one by two would probably be plenty, no? Uh, I mean, it's holding itself you already. A, you mean a two by two? I mean, a, I don't know, a smaller one. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so much better. Yeah, it looks better, huh? Yeah, it's holding way sturdier. It's not flexing. Exactly. So that's keeping the weight off the panels so that you don't get micro cracks all over your panels. If your panels got micro cracks, they'll still work, they'll just be less efficient. So, don't, how do I, how do I make a joke out of this? Hmm. <laughs> don't have micro cracks. <laughs> that's all I got, folks. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Yeah? Uh, come take a look. I got the first adjustment done. Oh, yeah? It's pretty exciting. Yeah, okay. We got one more to bolt in today, but I got the first the first level set. Okay, so the first one down. Yes, the, high, the highest The highest one. Yep. Okay, let's go see it. Look. Ow, babe, look at that thing. Oh, uh, cool. It looks great, honey. It does, right? And that's going to be up on wheels, so it's going to sit a touch yeah, higher. Yeah, it's going to sit a little higher. Yeah, I think the wheels will be like 8 inch height. How heavy do you think it is? <laughs> heavy? It's pretty heavy. Okay, it's not going anywhere then, I guess. Yep. So, Whoa! idea here, I have these real long bolts that are just holding the weight. I was going to use like a hitch pin, but they're expensive and heavy duty. But I just have this one screw in that's going to allow this to move. Then when we find the spot, you just get the bolt in. Fine. fiddle around with it till you find the spot. Boom, and that's in. Like, nice! Yep, so now to get a lower setting, we're gonna adjust it, slide it down some, drill the next slot for it, and we'll have two settings today, and then eventually probably three settings, I think. But yeah, pretty cool. This is gonna be a huge improvement on our solar system. For sure. Like, oh my gosh, four of these babies. It's gonna be so nice. Be able to chase the sun with it. Yeah, too. and we're gonna be able to chase the sun all day. Even though the sun has not come out today, so we haven't had like any solar. Wow, it looked good. All right, let's get this next one done. I let's got beer continue. to brew after this. Yeah, we got beer to brew today. Now let's show you the finished product. One person can do it. I wasn't sure how hard it would be, but that was really easy and it's not even on wheels yet. Gonna make it a little better in the future, but this is a good starting point. I'm so excited, honey. It looks so good. It's beer time, baby. No more bugs on my legs. <laughs> no more bugs on my legs. Is that why you're in jeans? No more bugs, yeah. <laughs> So brewing up some beer is always really exciting for us. This time, four years ago, Matt and I got married, and what he did was brew a bunch of beer for our toast. Instead of a champagne toast that's like normally done at weddings, we did a beer toast of his homemade beer. So it's the perfect time and the perfect atmosphere and all the anniversary vibes to start another batch here at the ranch. So today we're brewing a pumpkin coffee amber ale for October. Uh, we should have this ready just in time for Halloween. We're using some locally roasted coffee. 
some pumpkin that I'm gonna roast right now because that'll bring some extra sweetness up when you put it into the beer wart. Pretty exciting. Let's roast. This is mountain spring water we're gonna be brewing with today, which raises a lot of questions on if there'll be an algae bloom. I'm hoping from boiling everything there won't be, but there's a reason there's so many at breweries in Asheville, North Carolina, and that's because mountain spring water is the best water to be brewing with. Whew. All the moonshine stills were in the mountains, tapped out of mountain spring water, so we're trying to stay with that theme here. We just started the timer. This is gonna steep at between 150 to 170 degrees so that you don't bleach out too many tannins that are in the grains. Uh, we got the pumpkin in with that right now. So that's gonna run for a while and then we'll add some of the other malts uh, during the boil process. I can't find the strength to fight like this no more. I've had all I can take, too much to carry around. This brew recipe is like a really simple one. It's one where they give you like all different extracts and stuff. My goal is to get to the point where I'm doing everything straight from grain. Um, but this is my first time brewing in quite some time. I was starting to get pretty good at it uh, back when we owned the house. Uh, but now with this being the first time and I want to just have a quick, easy turnaround, uh, doing one of these ear kits with the malt extracts. Um, but I'm documenting this whole process of this beer because I want to remake it next October, hopefully using coffee that I roasted because that's a hobby I'm looking to getting into and using a pumpkin that was grown here. So that'd be pretty cool. So next year, we'll have a pumpkin coffee amber ale with a pumpkin from the ranch and coffee that I roasted here. Well, I really messed up. I'm using this cooler as my chiller because you kind of have to crash the temperature once you're done um, of, of the wart. And the pot that I was doing all the boiling in wouldn't fit in here. And I really needed to crash the temperature and I wasn't thinking and I was like, oh, well the carboy will fit in there, that's fine. So I poured all the beer into the glass carboy. Not thinking um, enough in, in that rush that 170 degree glass hitting ice water is going to do that. So we now don't have beer but it's all right. I ordered a new set, I ordered a replacement for this, and we will just brew another batch, and maybe I'll still be able to have it ready for Halloween, and if not, pumpkin beer will be good after Halloween. It's raining now, but sorry to end on a bad note. All's gonna be good here. Worst case scenario, I'll just go buy some pumpkin beer. It stinks though. Thanks for watching, friends. We'll catch you next week, hopefully, with two successful projects rather than one of two successful projects. I'm sorry, baby. It's okay. See you next week, fam. See you next week. <laughs> Cheers. Now,